Hello everyone. So, today uh, we will study the application of CFD. So, it is an introductory lecture. So, CFD is the short form of computational fluid dynamics. So, fluid dynamics you know that when we study the fluid uh, in motion then that is known as fluid dynamics. So, fluid dynamics is the science of fluid motion okay. and CFD is the this fluid dynamics when we study numerically then that is your CFD computational fluid dynamics computational fluid dynamics. Fluid flow is commonly studied in one of the three ways experimental fluid dynamics, theoretical fluid dynamics and computational fluid dynamics. So, first one is experimental fluid dynamics. So, you can study the fluid dynamics doing some experiments. So, you can measure the temperature with thermocouple or the velocity with Peter tube and you can study what is the velocity profile or the temperature profile using experimental techniques. Other way is that theoretical fluid mechanics or fluid dynamics. You have the governing partial differential equations which represent the fluid flow, heat transfer or uh, other uh, multiphysics problems. So, when you uh, write the partial differential equations we, with some assumptions you can write it to ordinary differential equations and with the boundary conditions if you can solve those equations then you can have the exact solution. So, theoretically also you can study the fluid dynamics, but you can study theoretically under certain assumptions because you have to bring down this partial differential equation to ordinary differential equation. Like if you are studying the fully developed fluid flow problem, then fluid uh, fully developed means there is no variation of velocity in axial direction. So, it essentially boils down to one dimensional problem and with boundary conditions you can solve and get the velocity profile theoretically. The other way is to study this fluid dynamics numerically. So, you have the partial differential equations using this computational fluid dynamics techniques you, you can solve the partial differential equation and get the solution uh, using computational fluid dynamics. So, computational fluid dynamics is the science of predicting fluid flow, heat transfer, mass transfer, chemical reactions and related transport phenomena by solving the mathematical equations which govern these processes using numerical approach. So, you can see that CFD is the calculation of properties of a flowing fluid. So, it is not only limited to fluid dynamics, but you can extend it to heat transfer, you can mass transfer, then some other multiphysics problems electrohydrodynamics flow or magnetohydrodynamics flows or with chemical reaction and many more. CFD provides a qualitative and sometimes even quantitative prediction of fluid flow by means of three ways. First one is mathematical modeling, then numerical methods, then software tools. So, if you want to solve some problem then first you find or you write the partial differential equations which govern the flow. So, that is your mathematical modeling, then you can choose suitable numerical methods like discretization techniques and uh, some solution techniques you can choose. Then you can use some software tools like you can solve using some solvers those discretized equations okay, and get some solutions in terms of data. So, only numbers will be there as output. So, to visualize this data you can use some post processor and 
in the preprocessor you need to give required boundary conditions and initial con conditions if required. So, in post processing tools you will be able to visualize those data and you can see the velocity profile or temperature profile or some contours using some post processing tool. So, we will now see the history of this CFD. So, you can see that earliest CFD work started in 1910 okay. and Richardson used human computers to solve Laplace equation using finite difference method and he solved flow over cylinder okay, only for the potential flow. Okay. For inviscid flow he solved using finite difference method. So, in 1910 using human uh, computer. Then Courant and his research groups <coughs> like uh, students Friedrich and Louis they solved the hyperbolic equations in 1928. Okay. Von Neumann uh, in 1950 proposed the stability criteria for uh, parabolic uh, problems which is known as von Neumann stability analysis and in this course we will study also this stability analysis, von Neumann stability analysis. Harlow and Fromm computed unsteady vortex state using digital computer in 1963. And later Harlow and Welch published a scientific American article which ignited interest in modern CFD and the idea of computer experiments. So, they solved first time the free surface flow which is a two component fluid flow problems in 1965 using uh, digital computer. Professor Brian Spalding is known as the founding father of CFD. So, he and his research group developed this boundary layer codes which is known as Genmix and in uh, <coughs> they developed these codes in the years 1960 to 1970s and 1972 they actually those code they put as a software as uh, known as Genmix, Genmix. and Patankar uh, is student of Professor Spalding and they their solution techniques for incompressible flows published through the 1960s and they first time proposed this simple family of algorithms uh, which we will study in this course for solving the full navier stokes equations uh, jameson computed euler flow over complete aircraft so this is uh, for compressible flows euler equation they solved and they published almost 14 papers in 1981 on this uh, uh, using the uh, Euler flow solver. Later this there was a problem because in the structured mesh it is very difficult to generate for a complicated geometry. So, the unstructured grid you can easily fit in a complex geometry. So, unstructured mesh methods developed in 1990s used for first used for aerodynamic calculation in NASA. So, later Professor Murthy and her group developed this unstructured grid uh, uh, solver for ANSYS fluent and she and her co-workers developed different modules in fluent and you can see the publications uh, during the development and uh, now this fluent is known as ANSYS fluent and most of you I think uh, uh, you use this commercial software ANSYS fluent for solving uh, any problem numerically. Now, who are interested in CFD? So, practical problems may include multiphysics like energy flow, chemical reaction, phase change etcetera and the domain or computational domain mostly these are three dimensional and very complicated. So, it is uh, relevant in the, so it is easier to use the numerical technique to solve the governing equations. So, relevant inter industries include automotive, chemical processing, aer aerospace, age back, heating, ventilation and air conditioner even nowadays in biomedical applications we use CFD. 
So, the results of CFD analysis is relevant engineering data used in conceptual studies of new designs, detailed product development, troubleshooting and redesign. CFD enables scientists and engineers to perform numerical experiments in a virtual laboratory. So, you can see this is a solution for flow over a circular cylinder, you have a circular cylinder and you have a fluid flow over it. So, if you do the real experiment, okay, the you can see the visualization. Now, if you do the CFD simulations, you will get this type of uh, simulation result. So, you can see that you are doing actually numerical experiments in a virtual flow laboratory. CFD gives an insight into flow pattern that are difficult, expensive or uh, impossible to study using traditional or experimental techniques. In experiment, it is very difficult to get the velocity profile or temperature profile at uh, desert or different locations. But when you use this CFD technique, you discretize these governing equations at a discrete points. So, you can get easily any value, velocity, temperature or species at those discrete points. So, it is easy to visualize the results in terms of velocity contours or velocity vectors or temperature profile. CFD does not replace the measurements completely, but the amount of experimentation and the overall cost can be significantly reduced. The doing experiment is uh, costly because you need to fabricate the setup and also you need different uh, instrument to measure velocity, temperature. So, it is very costly. So, easily you can use this numerical techniques to solve those partial differential equations for a particular problem and get the solutions. And equipment and personnel difficult to transport and CFD software is portable, easy to use and modify. So, you can see that real experiments are expensive whereas, CFD simulations are cheaper. Real experiments are slow, CFD simulations are faster. Real experiments is sequential, CFD simulations are parallel. Real experiments are single purpose, CFD simulations are multiple purpose. What does it mean? That when you are doing some experiment, so you have made the setup, uh, so uh, you are doing uh, the experiment uh, in the laboratory. So, at a time you can do only single experiments and obviously, uh, doing the experiment, fabricating the setup, it is very expensive. Whereas, if you develop a numerical solver for solving that uh, problems, fluid flow or heat transfer problems, then once the code is ready, you can solve the problem for different uh, conditions parallelly. Okay. So, that means, you can run that solver in different computers for different parameters. So, parallelly you can run and obviously, you can see that uh, it is very portable because you can take the solver with you to somewhere else, but it is very difficult to, uh, to uh, shift the experimental setup from one location to other. The results of CFD simulations are not always 100 percent reliable. The input data may involve too much guessing or uh, imprecision, the mathematical model of the problem at hand may be inadequate. The reliability of the simu uh, CFD simulations is greater for laminar flows than for turbulent ones, for single phase flows than for multi phase flows and for chemically inert system than for reactive system. When we solve these equations, we have some assumptions. So, obviously, when it becomes more multi physics, then you have lesser reliability. CFD is a highly interdisciplinary research area which lies at the interface of physics, 
applied mathematics and computer science. Now, let us see few examples or applications of uh, CFD applications uh, sorry applications of uh, CFD. So, first we see in the aerospace. So, you can see that when you are actually designing uh, this uh, aeroplane obviously, uh, you can solve the governing equations and you can design such a way that you can have the minimum drag while flying. So, obviously, in designing the exterior even for interior design also uh, you need uh, the CFD simulations uh, for the passenger comfort to design the combust combustor then pumps missile systems. So, you can use this CFD uh, to design uh, design these external aerodynamics propulsion missile systems and pumps. CFD application in automobile. So, obviously, here also you can have the you can use CFD for exterior design to reduce the uh, drag even for the interior design you can use CFD. So, that the air for the from the air conditioning reaches to all the passengers to fill the comfort. So, for interior design you can use the CFD even in the uh, combustion chamber ok you can use the CFD techniques and also for engine cooling and external aerodynamics you can use the CFD application in automobile. So, you can see some <coughs> in these animations one car is there and you can see how the flow physics looks behind this uh, car. So, it is very complex you can see. So, it is a numerical simulation. So, some CFD application in process engineering ok. So, you can use it for reactor design, heat exchanger. So, here fluid flow and heat transfer you can solve mixtures, boiler pumps ok, compressor and diffuser design you can use this CFD. This is some fan is moving and you can see how the flow looks like. CFD also you can apply in heating, ventilation and air conditioning. So, when you are designing uh, some room uh, for comfort stay you can use this CFD technique. So, for air flow around building, burner design, environmental control system, heating system design, room flow distribution. So, all these you can use <coughs> uh, that to solve these problems you can use CFD. CFD is also having applications uh, in electronics cooling. So, you can see that when you use any computer or uh, laptop you have the processor and it processor is having high temperature. So, earlier days in your desktop you will find uh, a fan mounted on the uh, processor and it is cooling. So, these kind of things you can actually solve using uh, CFD you can see this picture. Uh, where you are can see the temperature distribution. So, this is the fan and uh, here you have the uh, processor uh, with a pin mounted on it. Uh, so, the cooling is taking place uh, uh, due to the post convection. Uh, here you can see it is the application in a heat pipe. Okay. So, uh, you can do the CFD analysis for component level flow and cooling electronic chip cooling, magnetic storage devices, telecommunication equipment. So, some piezoelectric device you can see how the fluid flow is taking place vortex are generated. You can also use CFD in sports. So, uh, you can see uh, when uh, the ball is moving how the flow physics looks behind the ball you can see from here or if you are uh, cycling then uh, how the flow physics behind you you can solve using the CFD technique even for car racing and uh, swimming uh, you can use CFD techniques. 
Now there are many applications in biomedical, uh, so blood flows uh, through artery, arteries, uh, so you can have the deformable arteries as well uh, using different uh, advanced technique uh, you will you can simulate these problems, heart pumps uh, where uh, you have a moving boundary problems and for tumors say you can have the uh, solution of the heat generation inside the tumor and that you can model uh, using CFD. You can see uh, this is the uh, blood flow inside the heart, okay, so one simulation results. So, there are many applications of CFD in many uh, different industrial uh, in, in industry and you can see that in power generations, okay, power plant you can have uh, the application of CFD in hydraulics, so hydraulic turbine uh, all those things you can model using CFD. Uh, oil and gas industries in marine industries. So, there are many applications okay, in uh, different kind of uh, industries. So, the governing equations you can write uh, with certain assumptions you can apply this governing equations to some problem. So, assumptions may be like incompressible flow, unsteady flow, laminar flow, Newtonian fluid, single phase constant properties. So, uh, for this you can write the governing equations. So, obviously all the equations you can have the conservation loss, conservation of mass where continuity equation you can write, conservation of momentum where navier stokes equations you will write, conservation of energy, energy equation, conservation of species, diffusion equation. So, you can see that this is the order of continuity equation in general, but uh, if it is incompressible flow obviously it will be divergence of V will be 0. Then you have general transport equations for any species you can write this equation, specially for x momentum equation if you uh, write this equation then it is the temporal term, this is your convective term uh, and this is your viscous term, this is the pressure gradient term and if you have any source term uh, that you can write. Uh, energy equations uh, uh, in terms of enthalpy if you write. Uh, then uh, this is the energy equation where k is the thermal conductivity. Uh, species transport equation in terms of mass fraction y i is the mass fraction. So, that you can write. So, you can see you can see all these equations you can write in a general transport equation for a general variable phi where s yes may be different or the diffusion coefficient gamma will be different. So, when you have the governing equation you need to use some discretization techniques. So, mainly in CFD we use three different techniques one is finite difference method, uh, then finite volume method and finite element method. In this uh, course we will study only finite difference method and finite volume method. Uh, finite difference method generally uh, we use Taylor series expansion and find uh, the approximation of any uh, derivative first or second derivative and uh, we discretize the governing equations and write the final algebraic equations. When we use finite volume method then uh, we integrate the governing equations over a control volume and uh, write the discretized equation. But in finite element method we integrate the governing equation with some weighting function uh, in a particular element and we write the discretized equation. So, obviously, in this course we will study only finite difference method and finite volume method. To solve uh, these governing equations uh, you need to discretize this domain into grid. Uh, at those discrete point you need to solve the uh, discretized uh, algebraic equations. So, now grid can be classified into two structured grid and unstructured grid. So, as I told before that structured grid are easy to generate uh, uh, in a simple geometry, uh, but if you have a complex geometry then it is very difficult to generate structured mesh. So, you need to use uh, divide the domain into blocks and in the block uh, you need to uh, generate the mesh, but unstructured grid uh, is it is very easy. Uh, uh, to fit into a complex geometry. So, structured grid can be further classified as regular grid, uh, block structured grid and curvilinear grid. So, in the regular grid, uh, regular structured grid you can see uh, 
these are actually orthogonal in the coordinate system. So, if it is you use Cartesian grid, then these grids are uh, orthogonal to each other. It can be uniform spacing or non-uniform spacing. You can see we, here uh, we have used non-uniform spacing. Cylindrical grid, so in cylindrical uh, coordinate system, these are orthogonal to each other and in spherical grid, uh, in spherical coordinate the uh, grids are orthogonal to each other. So, these are regular structured grid. Then block structured grid. So, you have a complex geometry, then you can divide the domain into uh, zones and generate the mesh and at the interface you keep the continuity, okay, make the continuity. So, you can see it is some cylinder is there in this here. So, it is cylinder is there. So, this is divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 uh, uh, subdomains and each domain the grids are generated and it is a uh, continuity is maintained at the interface. Uh, so, this is one representation of the grid uh, for a flow over uh, circular cylinder. So, these are known as block structured grid because you are dividing uh, the domain into blocks and in each block you are generating the mesh. Then curvilinear grid. So, curvilinear grid are known as body fitted grid. So, uh, you can see that the grids are following the uh, body, okay, surface of the body. So, here you can see if it is uh, this is the body, the grids, this, this is the grid, so it is following the body. So, these are curvilinear structured grid. So, Obviously, these grids are not orthogonal you can see. Uh, so, these are non-orthogonal grids and uh, for different geometry you can see that uh, how the curvilinear grids are generated in curvilinear grids as I told that grids will follow the boundary. In unstructured grid, so we can have regular grid and hybrid grid. In uh, regular grid uh, you can have uh, same type of uh, cells okay, like hexadal, tetraedal, prism or pyramid in uh, 3D and triangular cell or quadrilateral cell in 2D and hybrid grids are grids where you can have more than one type of cells. If you have a hexadal cells and tetraedal cells are mixed then obviously you can have uh, hybrid grid. So, you can see here. So, you can see that in this case uh, this first figure you can see the grids uh, uh, are fine near to the boundary to uh, capture the gradient more correctly or more accurately. So, local refinement you can do using unstructured grid, but uh, in structured grid it is very difficult to do uh, local re refinement. because to maintain the continuity uh, this will be extended uh, in other uh, directions. So, in unstructured grid that is why it is very uh, easy to use uh, the uh, local refinement and you can see you can use hybrid grid, hybrid grid means more than one type of cells if you use. In this case you can see near to the boundary you have quadrilateral cells and away from the away from the boundary you have triangular cells. So, that means near to the boundary uh, you have almost uh, structured and orthogonal mesh so that you can capture the gradient correctly okay. and away from the sur uh, surface where you do not have much uh, gradient you can use uh, triangular cell. So, this is kind of hybrid cell. So, in 3D you can have uh, hexahedron uh, type cells or tetrahedron or pyramid or pyra uh, prism. Nowadays, uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, commercial softwares they use any type of polyhedra, but ANSYS Fluent earlier they used to use only these four types of cells for the um, three dimensional domain and for surface uh, grid triangular or quadrilateral mesh are used. So, you can see there are some advantages and disadvantages of the structured and unstructured grid. So, you can see the structured grid. Uh, what are the advantages? Efficiency in CPU time and computer memory, okay. uh, because in structured grid you can easily find the neighbors, okay. because you have uh, the indices i, j, k and i plus 1, i minus 1 or j plus 1 or j minus 1 will give you the neighbors. So, uh, less uh, storage memory is required and it is good environment for multi grid technique. Whereas, in unstructured grid advantages uh, are flexible for very complex geometry region and it permits automatic adaptive refinement based on regions of interest. So, in the particular 
region if you need very fine mesh then you can use actually unstructured grid. The disadvantages of the structured grid is that lack of total flexibility for very complex regions because you cannot do local refinement and it cannot be distorted to increase resolution in a localized region. The unstructured grid disadvantages are there that requires more memory as compared to structured grid to store the connectivity. So, in unstructured grid you cannot find the neighbors with the indices i plus 1, i minus 1 because there is no structured way these uh, grids are oriented. So, in pre-processing stage you need to find the neighbors or connectivity so that you can use it later while calculating the fluxes. So, obviously you need more uh, memory requirement to store this connectivity and the neighbors informations. And this another disadvantage for unstructured grid is not necessarily amenable to the implementation of multi grid. So, now we will uh, talk about the grid terminology. So, when you discretize the domain uh, for uh, generally uh, for finite difference method we solve the equations uh, uh, discretized algebraic equation we solved at this grid node okay, which are known as vertex. But in case of finite volume method we integrate over this cell. So, the uh, value is stored at the cell center okay, so or cell centroid and this is the cell and these are the known as faces. Okay. So, in faces in two dimension it is line, but it is three dimension it will be a surface. So, you can have node based finite volume scheme where the variable stored at vertex or cell based finite volume method where uh, the variable stored at the cell centroid. Based on the variable storage you can have uh, two different types of uh, grid arrangement one is staggered grid another is uh, collocated grid. We will learn more uh, detail when we will study the finite volume method, but here just I will introduce that when all the variables you store at the cell center or at the same node then it is known as collocated grid. So, you can see the velocities, pressure and any species let, let us say temperature or any uh, species you can store at the cell center at the same point then this is known as collocated grid. But uh, you can see that it is very uh, easy to uh, uh, have the data structure because all the variables are stored at the cell center, but it is having some disadvantages. Uh, so, that we will learn later that is known as velocity pressure decoupling. So, if you use collocated grid it may be possible that your velocity and pressure are not talking each other, because your velocity uh, there will be uh, uh, due to the pressure difference there will be velocity. right? So, if there is no pressure difference then obviously, there will be no velocity. So, uh, this pressure and velocity if it is decoupled then there will be problem. So, that is known as pressure velocity decoupling and when you have this checkerboarding kind of uh, uh, distribution of velocity or pressure then you will get this type of problem in collocated grid. So, that we will discuss in detail later and in staggered grid to avoid this problem velocity pressure decoupling problem we use staggered grid where we store uh, the variables at different places. So, we solve uh, the pressure and the scalars uh, like temperature or species at the cell center and the phase center in staggered way we solve the velocity. So, you can see in this figure. So, if this is the figure where we are solving at this cell center only the pressure and any scalar like temperature or species whereas, we solve the velocities at the at this cell. Okay. So, this is uh, velocity u velocity and at this cell we solve the v velocity. So, you can see that u and v are solved at staggered way and pressure and any scalar are solved at the cell center of the main control volume. So, this is the main control volume for pressure and scalar, but this is the control volume for u velocity and this is the control volume for 
v velocity. So, in staggered grid actually uh, you can avoid this pressure velocity decoupling, but you can see that storage requirements are different because as an u or v are solved in different places. So, you need to write the code carefully uh, so that uh, you can take care about the data structure. So, you can see that in collocated arrangements store all the variables at the same set of grid points and to use the same control volume for all the variables. Advantage obviously, it is easy to code uh, because all the variables are stored at the same point. Disadvantage is pressure velocity decoupling and in staggered arrangement not all variables share the same grid. So, advantage is strong coupling between pressure and velocities, but disadvantage is higher order numerical schemes with order higher than second order will be difficult. For the unsteady problems uh, also if you are uh, discretizing uh, uh, using forward time then this is known as explicit method where you have only one unknown where n plus 1 is the current time step and n is the previous time step. So, this is known as explicit method. So, only one unknown is there and uh, you can have in the right hand side all known terms at the time level n. But if you use backward time discretization method for the temporal gradient, then it is known as implicit method where you have more than one unknowns. You can see it is n plus 1 and here also n plus 1. So, obviously, you have more than one unknowns at n plus 1 time level, which is the present time level. Uh, so, this is known as implicit method. So, in the explicit method as it is only one unknown, it is easy to solve, but where in implicit method where you have more than unknowns. So, you have to use some numerical techniques uh, sorry numerical solvers uh, to solve these equations. So, uh, for solving this discretized equation uh, you can use these uh, iterative methods one is Jacobi method, uh, other is gauss seidel method we will discuss uh, in detail later, uh, successive over relaxation alternative direction implicit method. So, these are some iterative methods. We have some other methods where which are known as conjugate gradient methods, biconjugate gradient methods and you can also use multi grid. So, you can see that when you are solving uh, some problems using C CFD first you identify the right approximation okay, and write down the governing equation. So, identification of right approximation, approximation means whether it is viscous or in viscous uh, in viscid because uh, you can write the governing equation accordingly whether laminar or turbulent okay, incompressible or compressible single phase or multi phase. So, accordingly you first identify the right approximation and write the governing equations. Then you identify the right solution method. Okay. So, which discretization scheme you want to use say finite difference method, finite element method or finite volume method, uh, whether you can use want to use structured or non-structured grid okay. and what is the order of accuracy you will use temporal and spatial both. So, accordingly you need to discretize, discretize this partial differential equations. Then in pre-processing stage generate the computational grid because at discrete points you need to solve this discretized equation. So, uh, depending on your uh, choice uh, whether structured or unstructured grid you generate the uh, computational grid. Then in pre-processing stage you assign the boundary conditions. Okay. If it is time varying then with solutions it will, you need to apply the boundary conditions. Then set initial conditions. Okay for the unsteady problem. If it is a steady problem then you need to have uh, the gauge solution at uh, starting uh, uh, while starting the iterative method. Then <coughs> once all these are done then you compile the code. So, if there are some errors then you fix the bug then prepare input parameters. Then you solve this, uh, run the code, okay, monitor the solutions. Uh, so, whether your error is decreasing with uh, iteration or time that you check and monitor. Once you get the convergence, then you get the results, but results you will get in terms of numbers only, right. So, at discrete points you will have the values okay, of particular variables. 
So, those you collect and organize the data, then you use some post processing so <coughs> software and analyze the results. Now, once you post process it, first you need to verify the uh, solution. What is verification? Whether these are physically correct or not, because if you are uh, solving a fluid flow problem uh, in a channel, uh, let us say the flow is taking place from left to right, but if you are getting uh, the solution from right to left, the velocity is coming from uh, right to left, then obviously it is not physically correct. So, based on your problem whatever you have chosen, so you check whether the results are physically correct or not. So, do the results make sense? Are the trends right? Does it agree with previous calculation or similar configurations? So, that you verify. Once you get it, then you solve a known problem, which already the solution is available uh, in literature. So, that is known as validation. Okay. So, when you write the solver first time, you need to know whether this solver is giving correct result or not. So, to test it, you need to solve a known problem which is available in the literature. So, does the results or the aspect of the results agree with theory or experiments? So, you can have some numerical or experimental results available in literature. So, qualitatively you can check uh, first whether these are matching or not, but you need to verify also quantitatively. That means, you need to find the velocity uh, distribution at a particular uh, line or particular area, uh, then uh, you can compare it with the available results uh, in literature, okay. whether it is numerical or experimental, but you need to compare or any other values like uh, DAG coefficient or lift coefficient or the um, uh, moment coefficient uh, or the shear stresses distribution along a wall. So, all those things quantitatively you need to uh, compare with the with your results and the results available in the literature to verify your solver. So, that you will be confident that your code is correctly written and there is no bugs. So, there are uh, different types of CFD codes available uh, like commercial CFD codes, uh, ANSYS fluent, uh, uh, star CD, CFX, uh, then uh, console it is a very multi physics uh, software. So, ANSYS fluent, star CD these are uh, written in using finite volume method, but console is uh, uh, written using finite element method. You have some public domain software like Phi 3D, Hydro, OpenFoam and for uh, this uh, solving the uh, multiphase flow you have uh, Jerry's uh, and uh, Basilisk. So, uh, that are also available and these are free uh, you can download uh, and you can use it uh, in uh, and other CFD software includes the grid generation software. Obviously, you need to generate the grid uh, before uh, solving the equations and there are some software like grid gen, gambit, ICM CFD these are some commercial softwares are uh, available, but uh, also some uh, uh, open source software is there like salom. Mm. So, you can generate structure and non structured grid and it is having the uh, graphical uh, user interface also uh, to generate the grid and uh, to post process the results you have some flow visualization software okay so <coughs> take pol, uh, take plot uh, field view uh, you can use uh, to uh, post process uh, the results and visualize the uh, results uh, so these are some uh, commercial and open source software we discussed so in today's lecture uh, we have seen uh, why we need to use uh, the computational fluid dynamics and what are the uh, procedures to uh, solve any problem uh, using CFD. We have also discussed some history of uh, CFD, then we have seen some applications of CFD in particular areas and later uh, we have seen uh, the different types of grid, okay, structured grid and unstructured grid. Uh, we have uh, also seen uh, different grid arrangement like uh, collocated grid and uh, staggered, uh, staggered grid. 
uh, after that also when you uh, discretize the equation you will get the um, discretized algebraic equations, but you need to solve it right. So, uh, for solving it you need some solvers. So, we have seen some iterative solvers uh, like Jacobi, Gauss Seidel or successive over relaxation and also some direct method like conjugate gradient method or biconjugate gradient method. Uh, those things we will discuss uh, more uh, detail uh, in other modules and we have seen that uh, when you solve a problem what are the steps uh, you need to follow for solving any problems. Thank you.